Yeah, did you see like the other nights here? All, all the nights of the series, or were you just there on your own? Night? Oh, I was there every night. Was that right? Yep. What did you think of the event as a whole? For me, uh, I, I have, well, I have two probably separate uh, experiences of it. One is, is as a participant, and the other is uh, just as a, a listener, because I went to all the shows. Well, except for the ones I played on which were three of them, I was really, yeah. I guess I attended two, Keith's and Yuji's. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's, it's one of the most fun music festivals I've ever been in in, in my life. Is that right? Yeah. The yeah, uh, reason is, is because um, I think uh, um, uh, Koinuma, uh, Koinuma Mu Koin Mr. Koinuma uh, and Koinuma Music, his company, the, the producers, uh, actually pulled off the impossible. I mean, they, they put together a combination of music that, in most cases, would be the kind of art that would get played in some corner of existence, you know, and uh, that business people would definitely not be interested in. And, and, uh, He's dealing with the uh, esoteric art, you know, to to an extent, but communicative and powerful stuff. And and uh, he was able to generate uh, the um, somehow or another the the right kind of promotion and the right kind of support uh, to afford this festival in an an environment such as that hall. What's it called, Gotanda? The Gotanda. Uh, the kind, kind, kind. Yeah, kind. This nice hall. Um, the the uh, participation of the orchestra, the wonderful orchestra, the New Japan Symphony, the New Japan Philharmonic, and um, and pull it off, you know. I mean, the audiences came out, the, the people came, and the music was alive and vital. Uh, uh, it was uh, new music. Uh, I mean, except for Mozart and and uh, Bartok, obviously, uh, but still challenging music, you know. I mean, a totally great music festival that people came to. So I consider it kind of a coup, and and a, and a really um, in in the times of commercial music and commercial everything, um, I consider it a really hopeful, positive statement. If if you do think that it's broken ground, what what kind of ground has been broken? You think? Well, the fact that it happened at all is broken ground because uh, more and more, what seems to be uh, in uh, is is that uh, it, if if you do think that it's broken ground, what what kind of ground has been broken? You think? Well, the fact that it happened at all is broken ground because uh, more and more, what seems to be uh, in uh, is is that. Uh, uh, classical music, jazz music, cre creative music uh, f finds uh, um, it, it's difficult rallying support for it. Um, I'm not even talking about audience support, because that's after the fact. Audience comes as a result of uh, how, how much, uh, sometimes as a result of how much uh, promotion has been given to a particular project, you know. But just it, it broke ground for me as far as uh, showing that that music of that caliber can actually be uh, presented publicly in a big city like Tokyo. Uh, not once, but we did. Uh, there were four concerts. Um, most of them nearly sold out. And a few of them sold out. Uh, that is one aspect of what I consider to be uh, a breakthrough. The other breakthrough is that just just the program, uh, the combination of programs each evening, I think, was very, very uh, adventurous and creative and new music. I mean, new music uh, doesn't usually get aired. You, you know, when you go when you go to a concert, the well, businessmen love to love to be able to say to an audience, "This is." Red Bananas, of course you know all about Red Bananas because the, the record has been out for six months, it's on the charts, it's been on the radio. Uh, Mr. Bananas has been interviewed uh, uh, 7,000 times on television and his picture is all over the world. 
So people come and they know all about red bananas, see? But this is like, this festival consisted of, of almost totally new music, newly written music, new premieres of, of works. Um, it's, it was wonderful. Hmm. Would you feel like doing the same thing back in, say, New York? Do you think it would be possible? I would love to. I mean, uh, I wouldn't be as hopeful that it was that it would be uh, as successful there for some reason. Well, first of all, there needs to be someone like a Konuma who who uh, who has enough uh, intention and belief in in what he's doing to be able to pull it off. You know, he's a, he's rare in the, in amongst uh, entrepreneurs and prom and concert promo promoters. Hmm. I think what surprised a lot of people was your selection of Mozart material. I mean, if you were to move out of the realm of say quote-unquote jazz, people would expect you to maybe go play Sadi or something, but you chose Mozart. How, how did that come about? What led well, up to that? Um, I don't know how familiar you are with classical music, but um, our jazz, you say rock is your field, yeah. but um, well, maybe a, a brief and light uh, way to, to say it would be that um, 20th century classical music, the likes of Bartok and Stravinsky and Satie, which is kind of turn of the century, are, are more, they're, they're like jazz already. Uh, jazz musicians uh, and modern musicians have actually drawn from this music very obviously. Uh, so, so for someone like myself, who's been playing jazz and writing my own music for my life, to play Bartok, um, our satis is, is not such a, a big s change in sound for the people who are listening, you know. But uh, to move back along the historical track and touch upon classical music, and especially Mozart, um, is very unusual, but very, very logical, too, because, because um, the, uh, the, the, the richness that has um, that still exists in classical music in music in general uh, of, of course has very very traceable roots and uh, this era of classical music in, and in particular Mozart's music along with Beethoven's and Bach's and, and others of course um, are some of, are some of the really in the past couple of hundred years wellspring of, of, uh, of musical influences on this planet so, um, and, and Mozart is 200 years approximately out of present time, and yet uh, his music is more pure and more direct and more melodic than, than um, a lot of what goes on today in contemporary music. So for me, it was a logical choice to, to go back to a source point rather than to go to some music that's more like my own music. Which is anything but, well, I, would, I wouldn't say anything but pure and melodic, but those aren't words that come to mind when listening to your music. I mean, I, I think maybe purity, yes, but not necessarily melodic. So maybe that's why I think it surprised a lot of people. Mm. Um, I guess also uh, it, it was kind of fortunate that uh, you have a movie like Amadio's out right now that... Uh, Spurs on interesting more points out as well. Did you actually see this film? Yeah, I saw the film. What did you think of it? I thought it was, uh, uh, I thought it was, um, pretty, um, I thought it was like a piece of Hollywood entertainment. Hmm. I, 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 I it be, not being the casual observer, but being, uh, intensely involved in, in, uh, this music and Mozart's music, um, uh, and, and, and knowing a little bit about his life from having read accounts, uh, I can I view the movie with some knowledge. And the, 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 most people that go to see the movie aren't aware of the fact that the actual uh, story of the movie is is not really um, <laughs> that true. Is that right? Oh yeah. I mean, it, it's not a total lie, but the for instance, the whole uh, part about emphasis of you, did you see it? No, I haven't seen it. Okay. Well. The whole main plot of the movie, which gives the movie its Hollywood drama, is actually not true. <laughs> is that right? And people go away thinking that it is. Mm -hmm. 
and it presents Mozart as a as a kind of a silly, uh, uh, foolish guy. And the writer of the movie uh, uh, mistook uh, true high spirit, which was Mozart's, for frivolity. If you know what I mean? So I saw the movie and I thought. Uh, a redeeming factor is that um, the setting, you know, the, the design and the, the setting of the era was really done well. Hmm. And uh, the music, the soundtrack, uh, was actually excellent. So, um, This is probably an overlap of the last question, but you studied classical for a while at Juilliard, apparently, and then gave it up very shortly. I had had an intent. I actually never... I went to Juilliard for a couple of months. I, it never... It was a part of my life after high school that that um, others had told me I should go to a music university, and I tried it, and two months later I said, uh, I don't want it. So I, I, I can't really credit an attendance at Juilliard with anything to do with my musical life. Did it turn you off from classical to that type of experience? Did you give it up um, because of the music or because of the school? I did it because of the music, but, you know, um, at that point I, I, I needed more practical experience out on the street and out on the road and, and playing and uh, the school atmosphere seemed very stuffy to me and um, it just wasn't the right moment for me to get into it and I, ha I, I haven't I don't really consider that I've been a student of classical music until very recently in my old age <laughs> how did that come about what led to that um, it's, well several things um, First of all, uh, there'd been this, 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 this love of classical music since being young, and yet never, um, never even conceived that I would uh, uh, want to perform this music, <laughs> figuring that having, uh, having been backed off by the classical music environment and the... Uh, the rigidity of it and the negative aspects of it, you know. But as the years go on, my love for this music is so much that I, I, I begin to feel that it's in a way dishonest of me with myself to not play some of this music in public because I love it so much. <laughs> Oh, um, it, it, sweet and low, please. I'll put it myself. I do it myself. Um, you mentioned rigidity as a negative aspect of the music. What you mean, rigidity in the, in the interpretation of the music by other musicians? Partly, um, a, a kind of uh, a, a kind of a um, how can I put it? A kind of a regard for the dead composers that goes beyond just a pure recognition and love of what they did, but goes into a kind of awesome idolatry that is unnatural, you know, um, and is and is and is and is antipathetical. I don't know if that word works. It's it's it goes against is what I'm trying to say the feeling of making music. I mean, you don't, you can't make any kind of music, whether it be dance music, like rock, or, 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 or really just music for the soul and spirit, like classical music. You can't make any music in a, in a tight environment. There, there has to be uh, ease, and there has to be uh, love, and there has to be um, an, an affectionate environment. Hmm. And, and some of this um, reverence for the written note has turned into dogma, I think, uh, and so the classical environment becomes quite stiff uh, in that regard. I mean, but that's just the, the, the negative part of it. Uh, uh, there's no sense in dwelling on it. I mean, I, I, in, as a jazz musician, and as uh, uh, if there's anything that I've learned uh, from working for years, it's to be relaxed with music <laughs> to begin with. I think you were successful in conveying this emotion that you had originally felt from it. You think 
that was communicated to the audience? The, this, the, the, the emotion that I would like to communicate. You know, in, other, in other words, you say you, you need to feel affection for the music, and yes. that's the orig- probably the original intention of the author. Yes. And people, the ac- academicians who would prefer to play it in a more rigid oh, manner, I see. probably take that out. Do you think you put it back in? I'd like to. I'd like to think that I put some back in. I don't know. You know, um, I'm. I'm. Um, I'm a novice at it. And in actual fact, this performance uh, with the orchestra on on these concerts was my first public performance of any solo piano music of classical music. So uh, uh, I'm no authority um, at it. I just know. I just know that I. Uh, I know what my own love for, for the music is, and I hope that some of that, or a lot of that, at least, was communicated. Um, I hope so. How about Keith? Did you learn anything from the way he performed it? Absolutely. What type of stuff did you feel from him that, say, you wouldn't have felt from another, from or even yourself? Well, um, Keith is just a great musician, and um, he probably... more than any other musician who has come from from the jazz background has has made some real real positive strides and inroads into playing classical music um, he plays he plays classical music even though he's young at it uh, with with uh, with a wisdom of, of um, of the ageless musician that he is, you know. And in doing so, I think he, he helps really break new ground and, and um, for one, demonstrate the uh, ridiculousness of categories. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, so, 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 I mean, that's just like in a more social and cultural way what I think he's doing just just as a just as a musician and a piano player he's just superb he's he's one of my favorite musicians hmm. you said break down categories do you mean in he doesn't perform classically he doesn't perform jazz he performs key jazz music well no that's not what I'm saying either because uh, uh, he he does all three things <clears throat> that you just mentioned he performs uh, Keith Jarrett's music his own music he performs jazz of course not on this festival he performed no jazz but he's about to do a, a tour of jazz with his trio um, and he performed classical music but each each having its own integrity um, that's kind of what I meant hmm. how is it that you got together with him what led up to that um, it was a series of, uh, of, of things uh, starting with with uh, uh, um idea of, of this festival uh, and and uh, wanting to include myself and Keith in some way um, Koinum has been uh, promoting my own tours here for years and years and Keith's so he was kind of a meeting point for the both of us and this festival was and um, the idea of of performing new music and written music started to come ab- about, and I, and I th- I thought how much fun it would be to um, to to just play something together with Keith, and then he he replied in a letter, well, oh, how about a Mozart tune together, rather than playing jazz together, which we both have done all our lives. I thought, gee, that's a great idea, you know. And then I said, well, what about the double concerto, since I had learned that piece. Uh, a year and a half prior, and did and did it in Europe. <clears throat> and he thought about that for a while, and and said, "Yeah, let's do it." And uh, kind of one thing, it kind of got created like that. Hmm. So he's one person you'd always wanted to work with. Recently, I, I thought it would be um, it would be great fun and 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 um, maybe good music <laughs> to to do something with Keith. I mean, we have such parallel lives in a way we have had and yet our, our paths musically have never really crossed except in the early days unintentionally we were both in Miles Davis's band for a couple of months 
hard is it working with another piano as opposed to, say, other instruments? You mean just just the two pianos? Yeah. Two, two pianos? Yeah. Well, if you, if you were, um, I don't know, I'm trying to give you a good analogy. If you were, if you were into like um, racing Porsche, Porsches, and and you and, and and you found yourself at at a um, at a gathering of like ten other guys who loved racing Porsches, you know, you would have such an instant uh, affinity and friendship. It's kind of like that pianists um, and especially musicians who pursue similar musical tracks, classical music, jazz, improvising, that sort of thing. Man, you know, the piano is such a meeting ground for, for music that there's a instant ease and, and rapport. And making music with two pianos are, um, it can be like playing two symphonies, you know. Uh, you, you have, you have uh, all of this going on one instrument, and the possibility of all of this going on another instrument. I mean, you've actually got like 10, 10 guys playing 88 instruments twice. It's kind of one way to look at it, you know. You've got all this possibility of sound. And, uh, and it's just great fun. I, I love playing two pianos. Do you think anything stands in the way of other pianists getting together the same way? Is there like a clash of ego? Is there? Is it hard to mix pianos? I think among say other musicians, people with like such different styles that definitely blend. Well, gels. piano more than any other instrument. If you if you double it and make two of them, as opposed to doubling violins and making two of them or flute or whatever, when you double a piano, you will have not only do you have double possibilities, but you have double problems because pianists are used to playing with a lot of notes at once boom <clears throat> it's it's the it's the easiest invitation to to becoming unmusical to just start to slash it two pianos together and get in each other it's very easy to get in each other's way if 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 you don't become um, sensitive and selective and and musical about what you're doing does that work out okay when there's a lot of improvisation I'm sure that also requires a lot of planning in advance to maintain order in the music. Yeah, well, I mean, that's a whole other story. Playing, I improvising on, on two pianos is just a completely other story. You, you would, my own experience of it is that, that, um, that so many conditions have to be right and be met in order for really music to be made. Otherwise, it's very easy to just, for the whole thing to sound like chaos. Hmm. And what about this time around? It was all basically arranged in advance and you were reading off music. Well, this time we played Mozart's Mozart. double concerto. And Mozart wrote the music. And uh, I, I, I couldn't feel in better hands, you know. <laughs> you mentioned that jazz is very similar to stuff like Sati, Stravinsky, you know, the contemporary music of this century. You made, you make the transition very easily from one to the other as a listener, I take it. How about your fans? Do you think it's as easy as easy for them? say, get into that stuff as it has for you? No. I, I wouldn't expect it to be uh, for the most part. Um, I mean, one of the things that gives someone ease in something is having knowledge of it, you know, um, without having studied or without uh, being intimate with the various kinds of music, it might be uh, a little difficult to get used to going from one complete kind of music to another, especially having the same artist deliver the statement. You kind of don't know how to set your mind to receive what is coming. So you, but on the other hand, you know, one of the, one of the great purposes for art is to stimulate and to enlighten and to broaden uh, the mind and to to present new ideas and new realities and and so um, w what better way to um, to inspire uh, uh, a broadening than to go from one complete genre of music to another 
and in and do it correctly and do it with high quality and do it with love and the listener has got to become aware of something new you see Say, the same guy did that and did that and and then he, he he maybe will listen to both kinds of music newly you know I mean I don't know uh, think of a favorite musician that you have and, and uh, how interesting it would be to hear him play make some music that was you know I mean uh, again I'm trying to I can't think of a good example because I don't know what you what you're but you get the idea yeah yeah what sort of response have you had after well you haven't really made a switch but key to the music you're performing now first of all from say friends secondly from say fans how they responded to your performing Mozart for some reason or another there's a there's a great encouragement to do it uh, especially from those who aren't intimately involved in Mozart themselves there's a there's a great encouragement and, and uh, somehow or another this man this this Mozart man um, seems to seems to be a f finding out in a strange way a, f a focal point of some kind in our culture you know I mean um, even more so than Bach I'm trying to think of any any other single musician who who was in a way a, a reference point I'm not sure if I follow you in terms of focal point you mean like a point in common a common ground yeah everybody? yeah in a in a sense if if not if not through the knowledge of his music specifically, uh, through the the effects that he's caused and and his name even, do you know what I mean? Um, yeah. it, would be, it would be it would be difficult to find someone who never heard the name to begin with, and then when you get into a more knowledgeable area of people who actually listen to music, which is a pretty big chunk of humanity I, I'd like to think um, how many of them never heard of Mozart or, or felt something from him and then and then when you get even more rarefied amongst musicians how how um, how much agreement there is of, uh, about his creation being a standard having set a standard hmm. Hmm. you said you first performed the Mozart piece in Europe that must have been like a real acid test because everybody takes their music seriously, but I imagine in Europe it's taken about as as seriously as anywhere else. Well, if I had to do it over again, I may may not have done it. I did it very naively. I did it. I did it not thinking about my reputation or being compared to. Uh, a kind of music that uh, that has so much opinion uh, invested in it, and I, I did it very naively. Out of gee, I'd love to play this piece of music, and and uh, there was a invitation for me to do it from one of the great Mozart players, uh, Frederick Gulda. <clears throat> and so I thought, yeah, I'd like, I'd love to do it. I mean, it came out of me asking him for a music lesson, sort of. I heard him play Mozart, and I thought, I said, Gulda, that's great. Uh, I'd like to learn more about that. And a month later, he sent me the score to my house, and he said, okay, let's play this together next year. And I naively agreed, and then had work cut out for me that I had no idea what I was getting myself into. What did he think of the, fin the finished product, the actual performance? It's hard to tell. I think he liked it. I think he liked it. He was encouraging, and and the uh, uh, the conductor, who who was a great man and a great uh, musician named Nicholas Haunkor, um, was also very encouraging to me. So you know, I got anything but but put down, and I knew I was new at it. But I also brought some of my new music to the festival that we did, and. Um, so I think there was a nice exchange. I think if I wasn't a composer myself, 
and wasn't a maker of new music, I it wouldn't be I wouldn't be so easily encouraged to go ahead as a performer toying with this stuff. Okay, now the last couple of questions here. Um, back I guess in the early '70s, you were one of the few artists on the true cutting edge of the fusion thing. And I think people associate you, you know, with the front line of music as a more. Now that you're doing classical, do you think a lot of people will be led in that direction? Say, well, geez, Chick is doing classical. Boy, that must be where it's at now. Yeah, yeah. Well, first of all, uh, just for the record, uh, let it be known that I'm now not. I'm not now doing classical music. I mean, um, this is a. This is. A, 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 a real special project for me to play this Mozart. Um, I don't consider it a pro professional career. I consider myself a novice uh, with this music, and and uh, I can I, I intend to continue to study it. And um, but the, the main meat of of my communication and my performance is still my own written music, my own improvised music, and my own electric music. So, um, of course, I hope that those that do hear that through my my interest and involvement in some classical music, that it that it will uh, encourage some listeners who who aren't aware of classical music to maybe you know enrich themselves. And that sense, communication will be completed. Well, part, part of it, you know, I mean, see, Mozart's music and classical music is like, it's, it's, a, it's a thing like, like, it's, it's so rich and deep and beautiful and so much a part of, of the, 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 the reason and dream spiritually of, 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 our, of our civilization that if once you begin to realize that you want others to get into it and, and experience it yet as soon as you force it on someone and you say you must listen to this music you know because it's good for you it becomes like everything else that you present in that way and in a sense classical music has become has a little bit of that stigma about it to young people I mean it's like classical music who wants to listen to that shit you know what I mean I mean I can't dance to it there's no rhythm uh, you know or whatever they think so but the approach is you definitely can't shove it down someone's throat but it is there to be discovered and the, 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 the richness of it and the meaning that it has within our culture is undeniable if you just will look and see what is our culture really composed of. So, with this gentle approach, maybe some jazz listeners, some rock and roll listeners, some people who are not involved in classical music might get a sniff. Hmm. One last question, what are you going to do after this, after you leave Japan? Um, I, have, um, I have a very um, active year. Um, Consisting uh, of composition of new, pro new new music for for several major projects. One of which is the creation of a new electric band that I'm putting together when I get back to the U.S. Uh, the other is um, uh, the continuance of, of the writing of my chamber music. I'm I'm going to write some more music for piano and orchestra and. Um, and then I have the continuance of my trio with Roy Haynes and Miroslav Vitus, and we have some some uh, tours that are being set up. But the newest thing on the horizon for me is the reformation of an electric band. Who's going to be in that band? Um, it's hard to say right now. I'm going to put together some... Uh, um, I'm going to go at it project by project and, and finally find the musicians that are that are right. They'll be young musicians. Uh, you don't have to listen to any names, but like, what sort of instruments will be in the band? Well, I'm going to start out. I'm going to start out with with uh, and develop a, a real solid um, a rhythm section. So my f the, the first musicians I'm going to begin working with is bass uh, and drums.
and uh, with a keyboard setup. In fact, I, I'm going to do some engagements in April with just uh, a trio. Is that right? We're going to be back here. I take it back real soon. Uh, no, that's going to be in the U.S. Uh, it, it, my my trip back here is is, is tentatively planned for May, uh, and it will be an acoustic piano tour. Solo. Solo. Is that right? You'll be playing your own your original compositions. I'll be playing my own compositions. I'll be improvising music, and I I'll possibly be playing some classical music as well. Okay. All in the same program. Okay. Thank you for your time. Okay. It's been a pleasure.